ahead. Well, should we move on to line number two? Absolutely. Sure. Okay. Okay. I believe it's you're up, Seth. So I'm up for appearance. Uh, basically, it looks fairly, you know, it's fairly clear. Uh, I'm going to say bright, not day bright. Let's say something that you might see in the light like that. Fairly well concentrated, so I'd call that a medium plus. Uh, so the thing is that for color, you can actually kind of see, it, it may be hard to show here, that for let's say everything down here, you would have, you know, it's kind of really rather dark, but you can see a little bit of rim variation where it gets a little bit lighter as you go up through the rim. Uh, so basically I'm seeing it's kind of ruby. Uh, taking a look, there's no gas, no gas, no sedimentation. Um, let's take a look for just alcohol, for alcohol content. Um, I'm going to take a shot at this. I'm going to say it doesn't seem like, you know, for the alcohol, for the creep coming down, I'm going to say maybe it's a 12.5% for alcohol. So when you're swirling the line, mm -hmm. not only is that to, um, I believe it's to bring out the smell. Absolutely. You're, you're using it to show, so you can see those different things in the wine. Absolutely. Basically, you're getting it. If you go like this, you know, if you want to be pretty careful about it otherwise. Yeah, don't spill it on it. You want to on your fellow panelists here, but you can see that basically the alcohol, it's going to wind up, you know, see how fast it winds up going down, so. And, and what does that tell you? Basically, it gives you a little bit of an indication of the alcohol content. We're not much fun at parties. We stare, <laughs> introspect we stare introspectively at our glasses and, you know, don't talk very much to people. But, uh, you just, when you quietly go like this at a party, yeah. you know, yeah. that, that sort of thing. So. Noon has nose, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, uh, coming to a second line, I'm going to take a, an assessment on the nose right here. Definitely of sound condition. Um, I would say this is kind of a medium, moderately high intensity. Just, you can get a lot of from this. Uh, definitely a, a youthful aroma going on. I would say some juicy ripe raspberries, uh, some juicy ripe cherries. Um, maybe a little bit of stock crimson pear, you know, the red skin pear that you got. A little bit of floral thing going on. Um, hmm. Touch of talcum powder. Ooh. Oh. A touch of vanilla as well. Um, probably some new world of uh, wooden barrels, new world oak. Um, yeah, now I can really feel the carnation, that thyme, red floral thing going on. I like it. I like it. <laughs> All right. All right, so on the palette. Uh, palette's wine sound, it's dry, it's medium body, it's not too heavy on the palate. Um, fruit certainly confirming what uh, we picked up on the nose. A lot of uh, crunchy red fruits, cranberries, cherry, raspberry, uh, a little bit of some red currants, um, with just maybe a hint of some black fruit, a little bit of uh, like a black raspberry, just on the edge, a little bit of a, a plum skin. There's a little uh, slight bitter component as well, kind of like a, um, almost a leafy component, um, like a, almost even like a little bit of an oversteeped green tea. Um, getting just some hints of, uh, of oak, a little bit of that kind of smokiness. Um, some of that astringency as well. A um, little, uh, little clove nutmeg. Again, there's that, that there's some red flowers as well. It's uh, kind of a, a perfumed, uh, elevated tone on the back palate. Um, tannins are pretty soft. Um, they're, I guess, so medium minus tannin. Uh, alcohol is, is moderate plus, to put this around 13.5 uh, alcohol. Uh, acidity is moderate plus. Uh, there is some mouth watering going on. Uh, the wine is balanced. It has a, you know, it's a moderate, uh, moderate length and uh, you know a moderate plus complexity. Uh, decent amount going on in this wine. Sounds delicious. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I'm guessing you guys might concur that this is a cool climate, moderate climate type of grape based on just that alone. Would you agree or disagree? Definitely. So are we new or old world on this one in your minds? I'm going with New World. New World, okay. I'm gonna take a shot and say New World, but again, it's gonna be leaning towards the, those regions there where it's gonna be on a cooler climate, so. What do the terms New World and Old World wines mean? 
Old World is Europe, oh. and New World is everything but okay. Europe. <laughs> that's a that's a pretty good, uh, you know. Identification. Yeah. Yes. It's okay. Great. That makes sense. <laughs> and also, um, Old World tends to be a cooler climate. New World tends to be a little warmer. Well, in terms of New World and Old World. In the between. World? And in between? Um, somewhere in, in the Pacific somewhere. Yeah, that's it. Well, let's start with Old World. Are you judging on, on Old World, Michael? Are you somewhere in, in France again? Or I'm, I'm in France again. OK. Um, and I think the grape is fairly obvious in this wine. I think there's only one grape that this can be. Okay. Wine, for me, is a process of elimination. What You take out what it can't be, and then you see what's left. OK. Um, I think this is. Uh, I think this is Pinot Noir without a doubt. I'll go with, uh, you know, Oregon, you know, uh, Washington State, you know. Okay, okay. How about you, Noon? Um, I'm, two things come to mind, either uh, California, kind of like a North Coast Pinot Noir or New Zealand Pinot Noir. And I think for New Zealand, I, most of the time I get a little more earthiness out of it and um, there's definitely a little bit more wood influence in New Zealand Pinot Noir, so I'm just gonna go very straightforward, nice, bright California sunshine <laughs> Pinot Noir. Okay. All right, the reveal is, and your choices are, um, I'm sorry, did we get a vintage? We need a vintage. Vintage. Young, Young. one, two, three. Oh, eight, again. Oh, eight, again? Yeah. Oh, eight? Nine. Oh, nine, yeah. all right. Uh, okay, well. Two of your choices are 09, one is 08. Uh, let me start from there. Uh, the first is a 2008 Burgundy Pinot Noir, French. The I like that one. 2009 Sonoma Pinot Noir. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and the next is a 2009 Spanish Tempranillo. Michael, you're staking the ground. I'm sticking with my Burgundy, Cole. Okay, good. Man, that's tough because the thing is that I wanted it to be more north for Sonoma. So, you know, I'll go with that. We'll see what happens. Sonoma. Sonoma. All right, we have two Sonomas, one French, but we all agree it's Pinot Noir. And the answer is... Tempranillo. <laughs> 2008 Burgundy Pinot Noir. All right, well, um, well done. let's move on to our final wine. Uh,